How does a microwave oven work? How could these ovens hit our food in just a few seconds? I'll try to explain to you the theory step by step and I'll do the best that I can. Remember that a few weeks ago I've made a teardown of an old microwave oven and I explained to you how the magnetron works. So in order to understand today's video, you first need to watch that other video and understand how we can create microwaves. So guys, let's get started. This is my new microwave oven, since my old one was torn down to pieces. Now remember from my previous video that we applied 230 volts AC to this huge transformer and this will apply more than 2000 volts to the magnetron and this will output microwaves. The magnetron output is inside the oven behind this great plate that is called a waveguide. But the question is, how can microwaves hit our food and is this dangerous for us? Well, let's find out. But first, a quick word from the sponsor of this video. Hey guys, before we start with this video, just a quick word from our sponsor, PCBWay. As you all know, I make a lot of PCBs and I always use their services. For example, look how awesome their prototyping PCBs are. And you can get this for only $5. They are so professional and they will make your project work a lot better. And to order such PCBs, you only need a few minutes on their website, where you can select any configuration that you want for your boards. Along with that, you can also order the SMD stencil for soldering the components using solder paste. And you can also use their services for flexible PCBs and create some unique projects. And if you want to make your project start to finish, you can get the PCBs assembled together with the mold injected part or maybe 3D printed, metal parts or other CNC services, all with PCB way. Okay, so microwaves are actually electromagnetic waves, but in a particular range of the spectrum. And these waves oscillate between 1 GHz and 1000 GHz. If you analyze any electromagnetic wave, you will find that it has an electric field component and a magnetic field component, and that's why they are called electromagnetic. And these fields are oscillating and perpendicular one to each other. But we are only interested in the electrical field, which is responsible for heating up the food. But the food must contain water, which pretty much any food has. This is a water molecule. It has one oxygen atom and two hydrogen atoms, and for that reason is called a dipole. So water is a polar molecule, and we have 104.5 degrees between the hydrogen atoms. But you see, both the oxygen and the hydrogen are charged, but the oxygen is more negative and the hydrogen is more positive. So when we apply an electrical field, this will push the atoms, creating torque, and the water molecule will now align with the field orientation. But remember, our microwave electrical field is oscillating, so it's going up and down. So the water molecule will also oscillate at the same time, always following the electrical field. So vibrating molecules in physics represents heat. Basically, the heat is just the average kinetic energy of the particles of a system. So vibrating molecules equals heat. And that's how the water is heating up under an electrical field that is oscillating. And since the food is made out of a lot of water, the food is also getting hot. And that's why if you place something without water inside of a microwave oven, it won't get hot such as an empty glass container, ceramic, plastic and so on. So by now we know that the electrical field oscillation of the microwaves are hitting the food. We also know that the magnetron is creating that microwaves. And all that is left to know about is the metal resonating cage of the oven. Because you see, the magnetron uses a lot of power and we need to make it as efficient as possible. And we also need to confine the microwaves only inside of the oven, because otherwise they would harm us. So to increase efficiency we use reflection. So the microwave will exit the magnetron. In front of it we place a metal sheet, and this will reflect the microwave. And on the other side we place another metal sheet, but with a hole for the magnetron output. And this will reflect back the microwave once again. And like that we create a back and forth reflection of the microwaves. 
and at the same time the energy of the microwave is now trapped inside of this confined space, which is what we also want. But this is not yet the most efficient way of doing this. What we are looking for is called resonance cavity. And to understand that term, we first need to see the difference between a traveling wave and a standing wave. So the microwave that is coming out of the magnetron is something like this. It's traveling forward, so if we track this node for example, we can see how it is advancing forward as well. But on the other side, a stationary wave is something like this. Its amplitude oscillates, but the nodes are always in the same place. So I guess that with this simple animation you can see the difference. And this is what we want to achieve, a standing wave. Waves can be superposed, and the resulting wave is the sum of the other two waves. So imagine that we have a wave that is going to the right, and another one that is going to the left. So the sum of these waves would result into a stationary wave that would increase and decrease its amplitude. And even more, the maximum peaks are now double the amplitude because it will sum the maximum peaks of the two waves. For example, when both waves are at the same angle, we get the maximum amplitude. And then when the waves are opposed 180 degrees, we get the minimum amplitude. And that's how we get some more powerful and standing oscillating waves instead of traveling waves. And to achieve this wave reflection, the oven is using metal walls. Like that, the wave will bounce back and forth, creating the superposed waves. But there is one more important thing. The distance between the reflectors. Because you see, without controlling the distance between the reflectors, the wave will reflect again and again and again, creating a lot of unsynchronized waves. But what we want is to have only two waves that are superposed. So the reflected wave needs to be exactly over the original wave. So by moving this reflector back and forth, we can find the exact distance where the reflector wall would be at the intersection of the first two waves. So now the third wave would be exactly on top of the first wave, and then the fourth wave would be on top of the second wave and so on. So basically, we would only have two waves going back and forth. And that's exactly what we need to create that stationary wave of double the amplitude. And this is the final wave that will hit our food and is a lot more efficient. So the distance between the walls of the oven metal case must be proportional to half of the wavelength of the wave. And typically, consumer microwaves ovens are using a wave of 2.45 GHz so the wavelength will be 12.2 cm. So the distance between the walls could be 6.1 cm, 12.2, 18.3, 24.4 cm and so on. But one more thing. Why do we have the rotating plate on the bottom of the oven? Well, by looking at the waves, that's easy to understand. As you can see, the oscillating wave will have all the power on these peaks of the wave and almost zero power where the node will be. So basically the food would get hot here, but it will stay cold here. So in order to apply uniform heat, we rotate the food so all the parts of this food will pass through the wave peaks. And if we didn't do that, we would only have some hot spots on our food and the rest will be cold. So by rotating the plate, we ensure uniform temperature all around. So by having a metal case, we get the stationary wave, but also keep the dangerous waves inside. But wait a minute, the door of the microwave is made out of glass, and not metal. So how is that the microwave can get out and hurt us? Well, that's because behind of this glass wall, we have this metal mesh. And this metal mesh is specially designed so the wave couldn't pass. Basically, the wavelength of the microwave is too big compared with the holes of the metal mesh. So the waves will still reflect and stay inside, and they are not a danger for us, even with the glass door. And one more thing that you should know. Why we use microwaves and not other type of waves? Well, because of the energy absorption. Because you see, if you were to use a shorter wavelength such as the UV light, 
the energy would be absorbed on the exterior of the food, and the interior would still be cold, because the UV light simply can't penetrate too deep. And on the other side, if you use a larger electromagnetic wave, they would have such a big wavelength that they will pass over the food. Also imagine how big the oven should be in order to achieve the superposed waves and create the stationary wave. So guys, that's how we use the magnetron from the previous video, together with the resonating case of the oven to heat our food. It's quite an interesting phenomenon that was found by mistake during the World War II by Percy Spencer while working on improving the radar technology. I hope that you have learned something new and if so, consider giving me a like or comment below. Thanks again and see you later guys. So guys, here I am in my workshop, another video that ended, I hope that you like it, and the most important part, I hope that you have learned something new. Anyway, I just wanted to give a thank you to all my patrons, to you guys, to the viewers who are supporting me, liking my content, uh, sharing it, commenting below, uh, just check my website, check my shop, check my t-shirts, all this kind of stuff will support my channel, so thank you very much once again.